Pray with me, if you would, please. Father, thank you so much for this time in your presence. Uh, I'm truly in awe. There's nothing like your presence. It's what I live for. I, it's what I live for. This one thing I desire, I will seek, is to be in your presence. We love the habitation of your house. We love that you would make your home with us, that you would abide with us and rest upon us. Pray with me. Would you just softly pray? We thank you that you're resting upon this house. Oh, man, I just... My heart is gripped with the spirit of the fear of the Lord right now. I feel like in a healthy way, we need to get the fear of the Lord back in the church. Not in a religious, silly way, not in a legalistic way, but in a way where our hearts are beholding him. Let's just behold him one more time. Can we lift our hands and just thank him for his presence? Just quietly pray. I want to ask our prayer team, would you softly pray in the, in the spirit right now? Come on, just thank God for his presence. Lord, thank you. I pray that every person in this room would encounter your peace, your love. Whew. Man, I just, how many can sense the resting of the spirit of God? Just begin to wave your hands as they're lifted high. Lord, thank you for your tangible manifest presence, Lord. Whew. Glory, glory, glory. Bless your people today, I pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen. Well, I, uh, I'm trying not to get lost because I'm a little intoxicated in the spirit. I want to share this word with you. I believe it is a word for us. And uh, I, I've never preached this particular thing before. Um, so let's just start by reading Luke chapter 3. Who has their Bibles? Come on, lift it high if you have an actual real Bible. Come on. Real, no, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. Okay. So I'm just asking the real Christians. No, I mean the ones that have. Now, actually, you know, it's funny is I usually don't even read it from the paper Bible up here. It just makes me look more spiritual. So I usually have it on a device or on my phone or something. So if you have your device, um, let's let's uh, get ready, and we're going to read in the New King James, the New King Jimmy version. Come on, somebody, and we're going to read what is known in the historical church as the Epiphany or Theophany, uh, at least in the Eastern Church, and it's celebrated January sixth, and uh, has nothing to do with the calendar as far as the day that we're in now. Um, but I'm just giving you a little historical uh, stuff on this, and. Theology and so epiphany or theophany means a revelation of God, and it it is the it, it's found um, at the baptism of Jesus. How many know that throughout the Bible there are theophanies, or uh, in Protestantism we call them Christophanies. So uh, a Christophany would be uh, a a pre-incarnate Christ in the Old Testament revealing Himself, like um, a, an example of a Christophany would be Isaiah chapter six where Isaiah uh, is in the temple and he sees the Lord high and lifted up. Do you guys remember that scripture in Isaiah chapter 6? He sees the Lord, Yahweh. That is, that is a revelation or a manifestation of God. Um, it's a manifestation of Jesus in the Old Testament. Very powerful, very profound. But this is the first time that we see a revelation of God in the New Testament as Trinity, as Father, Son, and Spirit. We're going to talk a little bit about that, but this is known as, um, as a theophany, okay? And it's, it's, it's something that's celebrated, and there's a couple reasons why. One, it's the beginning of the ministry of Jesus. He's baptized, and then he goes into the wilderness. Um, and then it's also uh, a revelation of the Father, Son, and Spirit. So it's a revelation, the self-revelation of God in Christ, revealing um, we're going to read it in a moment, but it's, it's Jesus coming out of the waters, the Holy Spirit, and then the voice of the Father from heaven. Now, we're going to springboard off this because there's a lot of very profound things. If we understand that when Jesus was baptized, um, in, in his vicarious humanity, 
because he was fully God and fully man, vicariously, he was baptized for you and I too. How many know that? When you're baptized in water, you're identifying and bearing witness to the baptism of Jesus. The Bible says that when you go down to the water, we're baptized into Christ, right? And there's also a baptism of the Spirit. We'll read in a minute, 1 Corinthians 12, where the Spirit baptizes us into Christ. That's when the Holy Spirit indwells us, you know? And so there's this, this powerful reality, though, that when Jesus is going in the, through the waters, he's going in the water, it's also a type and a shadow of the Old Testament people being delivered through the Red Sea. Remember, it wasn't just one person. It was the people of God being set free from the bondage of Egypt, that slavery. And God set his people free and they went through the Red Sea. And then where did they go? We got a lot of Sunday school kids up in here. Come on. They went into the wilderness, right? On a long journey. Someone said a long journey. Did somebody say that? How many know after Jesus was baptized, where did he go? Into the wilderness. And the Spirit led him there. So these are types of things that happen in the Old Testament. And so when we look at this, and there's a reason, and there's some other verses I want to read, but it's very powerful, and it's important for us as the people of God, as we're New Covenant Christians, and uh, we know who we are, we know what Jesus has accomplished for us, but then as a people that should be healthy, how many know the church should be so alive and healthy right now more than any time in history? Not just for the next generation, but I mean for the world right now. The church needs to be alive and healthy. And, and I feel like uh, the church is kind of going through some stuff. And I think you either have people that are uh, jumping on what we might call the progressive church wagon, which I don't think is progressing, <laughs> if I could just say that nicely. I don't like the, the progressive church because I think that they're just adopting political ideologies and not kingdom, uh, not kingdom understanding, not the heart of Jesus for the problems of the world that are going on right now. And so we can't, we can't just adopt uh, ideologies and, and things to try to fix things and just do what the world's doing. We need the heart of Jesus. We need the reign of the kingdom of God to, to bring about his healing, abounding, thriving, innovative, creative, uh, peaceful, loving order to a world of disorder and chaos. And, and so I want to talk about this theophany, okay? I want to talk about this epiphany. This, this is, again, this is known in the Eastern Church, January 6th. It's also known as the, uh, the Feast of Lights, but it's the revelation of who God is in Christ. God reveals himself. Now let's read um, Luke chapter 3. Are you all ready? And that was my introduction, so my preacher clock actually starts right now. Okay? But I'm only going to go like 22 minutes more. So praise God. Look at the person next to you and say, praise God. My pastor loves me. Amen. So verse 21 when all the people were baptized, remember John the Baptist, he's baptizing people. It came to pass that Jesus was also baptized. And while he prayed, the heaven was open. I love that. And while he prayed, the heaven was open. Verse 22, and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. So Jesus is being baptized comes out of the water, and then the Holy Spirit manifests in the form of a dove. So you have the Son, you have the Spirit, and then it says, a voice came from heaven. Who's the voice? God. It's the Father, God the Father, amen. You are my beloved Son. This is what the Father spoke over Jesus. You are my beloved Son, and you I am well pleased. So good. So this is the revelation of God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the life of Jesus. Now remember the types in the shadows. As he's going through the River Jordan, it's a type of us in the Old Testament going through the Red Sea. How many know that Jesus is our deliverer? Come on. And when we're baptized into him, we're baptized into his death. We've been co-crucified with him, and then we can now walk in newness of life. And so there is a reality here. Now I want to just read a couple other scriptures. I want to focus on that open heaven thing. How many believe that we live under an open heaven? Come on. Now, I know we're in Rochester and it can get cloudy in here, but I'm talking about in the spirit. 
Now, it's interesting. You, a lot of times, and I've never really imagined it this way until recently, it says the heavens were open. I don't think, I think that there literally was clouds that parted. I think that it was a literal thing they saw, just like the dove. How I many know the dove was a manifestation? They saw it. It was a same thing with the tongues of fire in the upper room. It was not just some, you know, metaphor. Oh, we saw it in the spirit. No, there was a manifestation physically from the spirit to the natural realm. There was physical fire. Come on. It was a spiritual fire. It was an uncreated fire, which is the fire of the Holy Spirit, because our God is a consuming fire. But how many know it was, it was like it was something that happened. So if you could just imagine with me for a minute, imagine clouds, and then Jesus comes out of the water, and all of a sudden, there might have been thunder. In other parts of the scripture where God speaks from heaven, uh, if you look at the reaccounting of Paul's conversion, you remember when Saul converted to Paul, when God changed his name? I remember the road to Damascus, he's killing Christians, then Jesus shakes them up. He falls down. He has a revelation of Jesus. Well, in one of the reaccounts of his conversion, the guys around, when God was speaking, Jesus was speaking to Paul, everyone else heard thunder. Interesting. Now, I don't know if that happened here, but we do know there are other parts of the Gospels where it says that too, where Jesus, again, the Father says, this is my beloved Son, hear him that some heard thunder and lightning. In the Old Testament, you guys remember, when Moses is talking to God, everyone else is like, all I saw was thunder and lightning. I don't, have, I don't want nothing to do with that. You go talk to him, Moses, right? By the way, the way that we posture our hearts to God is the way we're going to encounter him. If you seek him from like a Mount Sinai and Old Covenant, you might experience a little bit of that thunder and lightning. Now, it's important, though, that we understand that God wants us to encounter him. The manifestation of who God is, the revelation where we come into, listen, the Bible is not just for us to get smart and know theology and be able to, you know, defend the word. I, I love apologetics, but apologetics without encounter is religion. Because when, when your knowledge fails, your encounter won't. We have the scripture, we have reason, we have holy tradition, healthy tradition, not tradition that's religious, but good tradition, and we have our experience. This is how John Wesley did theology. It's called the Wesleyan quadrilateral. I know I'm telling you a lot of theological things, but it's important because we don't just, well, all I need is the Bible. No, there's some people that read so much Bible to their blue in the face, they don't even act and talk like Jesus. Hello? You know, when Josiah was preaching, he, I think he read the verse in, uh, in John chapter 5, verse 38 and 39. Jesus is looking at the Bible answer men of the day saying, hey, y'all search the scriptures and you know it like the back of your hand. I'm paraphrasing. But you're looking at the word right now, not realizing that the scriptures testify of me. We can read scripture and not know the word. Uh-oh. We can know, we can have knowledge without encounter. And... The Bible is about us. Listen, and we have to understand it is so important. And as a core value of our church, number one, to encounter the manifest presence of God. Amen. Throughout your week, whatever you're going to do this week, whether you're pulling weeds, God have mercy, or you're at Starbucks, God have mercy. I don't like Starbucks coffee. Or you go to Glen Edith or like a real coffee place. Come on, Josiah. Come on, somebody. You know, or, or whatever you're doing, whether it's at work, you can be aware of his presence. You could be praying in the car, whether you're doing a training to a bunch of police officers. Come on, somebody. You can release heaven over them, which you did. Oh, I love it, man. I love it. I, I mean, whatever you're doing. How many know that God wants, he's wooing us all. He wants intimacy. He wants communion. It's what we're made for, right? But there's another encounter that sometimes I think we miss. And it's what I would like to call the corporate encounter. I'm not talking about encountering a corporation. I'm talking about when we as the people of God together encounter God. Like we did today. Like we are now. Where we're worshiping. And Jesus is in the room. And it's like, all right. I told my wife a minute ago, I said, I could just dismiss, baby. I don't need to preach. She's like, no, you should preach and do this. And I'm like, okay, yes, boss. I've been married 20, almost 22 years. I've learned, I've learned how to listen to my queen. Come on, somebody. Some of y'all have been married a couple years like, 
Uh, please, yeah, see how long that lasts, dude. <laughs> She's my queen. Okay. I could have dismissed up here, man. I could have been like, all right, we just had church, man. Jesus manifests when we're all together. You know what bugs me is when we're in a worship service and one person's really encountering the Lord and then you have someone else, they could be encountering the Lord quietly, contemplatively, that's fine, but then you have some people that shut their hearts off and it's like they're not even in the same room. My prayer is that everyone in the room gets drenched with the river of living water. Like, you know when it rains really hard? You know, like, what, so in Vegas, we have, we have flash floods where all of a sudden the rain just pours down. You know, when we first moved here, we brought the last box off of the moving, off of the pod, and we go into our house, and all of a sudden the rain comes out of nowhere and just rains right in our backyard, then stops. And even the locals are like, that's kind of a weird thing. It doesn't always happen. Then Glenn is like, sure enough, the Wexers get here and God sends a sign and a wonder. Revival is here. <laughs> you remember that? There's something about encountering the presence of the Lord together, though. You know, when the children of Israel were getting delivered from Egypt, they got delivered together. Let's start praying for corporate deliverances. You know, sometimes I don't think we see it because we're like, well, so-and-so needs deliverance. No, you need deliverance, too. We all need some freedom. Hello? <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right? Like, I think sometime, now listen, let me just give you a couple scriptures here. It's very powerful. So the heavens were open. You've got to know the heavens were torn open. This is the revelation of God. The heavens are open over us. We don't have to, like, strive for revival. Revival is here and now. You can become revival. William Booth said, I am a move of God. You know why he was a move of God? Because he sat outside bars and preached the gospel. Ha! Oh, that stirs me up. And these drunk people would come out and spit on him, and then they'd get saved, and then he'd be out there the next night, and a couple former drunks, saved, healed, and delivered, would be right next to him preaching. He raised up 50,000 evangelists in Europe, founder of the Salvation Army. Now it's more of a benevolence ministry, but it started as an event, like evangelistic power. Smith Wigglesworth said, if God's not moving, I'll move him. You've got a river in you that wants out, a river of life. And all you got to do is drink living water from Jesus. Revival. The heavens are open. The heavens are open. Well, Pastor, we've got to do 24-7 prayers, and then, then God will grant us revival. No, especially if you're going to give yourself credit for it later. You know, when I stopped fasting, God moved more because I was fasting from a religious perspective. Instead of fasting to clear my head and posture my heart before the Lord, I'm fasting and I'm reading in the King James where it says these come out by, only by prayer and fasting. Do you know, and fasting is not even in the original language. Religion put it there. Thinking we can gain authority and favor from God from fasting and praying. It's asceticism. The finished work of Jesus, you can't add to what he's done. And revival's here and now. And God wants us to have that revelation that the heavens are open. In the Old Testament, Isaiah 64, Isaiah says, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. Jesus answered that prayer and that cry of the Old Testament prophet. Come on. We see it at the baptism of Jesus. We also see the reality of it when he is on the cross absorbing the sin of mankind in his broken body. And then he says, Father, in your hands I commit my spirit. And right at that moment, the Bible says, the veil in the temple in which the Holy of Holies was contained was ripped from top to bottom. And that was a thick veil. Five inches, I mean like thick veil, just shh, all the way down. You know what we do pertaining to revival and these things? We stitch that veil up with religion. And then we say, well, no, you can't come over here. This is holy, but you're, you're not holy. So we do the us and them thing. We're so good at it. But God's like, no, my heart is open. Come drink. 
living waters. Come and be forgiven. Come and be healed. Come on. But we see that the, the tearing of the veil is similar language as the tearing of the heavens opening at the baptism of Jesus, at this epiphany, this theophany, this manifestation of God, where God breaks through the clouds. And I believe God is positioning us as a church to break through the clouds, that we would have a corporate encounter with God together. See, something happens when we get delivered together. We see each other differently. Oh, man. When we get delivered together, when we get healed together, we see each other as whole. My goodness. I'll tell you a story. Uh, 2018 was a, a messed up year for me. I don't know why. I, it was a wilderness year. I was in the wilderness. I, I, I couldn't identify why I, I felt discouraged. There was no reason our church was thriving in Las Vegas. One of the most, coming out of the, one of the most fruitful seasons of our church. I mean, the move of God. But I felt pressure and I felt discouraged and I felt depressed. And I didn't know what was happening 2018, almost the whole year. It was horrible. And, and listen, like I know how to pray for myself, which I would encourage. We should all know how to pray for ourselves, right? Because sometimes your pastor ain't there, and sometimes your small group leader is not there. Come on. And, you've, and sometimes you just got to encourage yourself in the Lord. Yeah. You got to pray. You got to say the name of Jesus. And it might be in tears, and God hears those tears too, right? But, but there's something about just encouraging yourself in the Lord. So I did that, but it didn't work. It wasn't lasting. I would pray, and towards the end of the year, right after Christmas, which is already a depressing time, right? Especially for Christians. We don't party like we did on New Year's Eve, right? Well, some of y'all do, but <clears throat> anyways. But you know, after Christmas, it's like, oh man, we just keep our, because we're trying to endure the, the winter, we're from Vegas, we kept the tree up to like fe the end of February. You come to our house, January, February, you're going to see a Christmas tree up. And probably some Irish, happy Irish music playing. It just, it just like, ah, you know, I don't know. It does something to us. So the end, the end of 2018, Christmas passed. And it was just a rough year, man. I, I, it was tough. And so one night, we're hanging out, our whole family, my wife and I and our kids. And Hannah, uh, Hannah Grace, my daughter, has this gift that when she dances, just you know, like Sarah has this gift when she sings, the presence of God manifests. Well, when Hannah moves in like, it's like she just moves. I remember she was moving and doing this thing with her fingers, and I saw angels commanded to worship with every movement of her finger. You wonder why worship leaders do that? I think they're commanding angels all over the room in the spirit. They don't even know it. So Hannah and Layla are doing a little dance routine, and Hannah had the brilliant idea to say, hey, let's do it to worship. Let me teach you how to just do spontaneous worship. And the presence of God flooded our living room. My wife joins, and uh, I look down, and Hannah and Mom and Layla are all huddled up crying. And the song was on, this worship song, Sales. And the presence of God just filled my living room. It was to the point where my sons took an Xbox break, an Xbox break to come down for a pizza pocket or a hot pocket and a Coke. And they tried to go back upstairs, but they couldn't because God was encountering us as a family. It wasn't just an individual encounter, it was a corporate encounter. But this left a huge mark, and I got delivered. We all, in fact, we all got healed and delivered. It continued to where my sons joined, I joined, and we're all down there just like crying. And the Father's just loving on us. And in that moment, I thought to myself, I'm like, now's the time. I know I'm Pastor Zach, I'm, I'm the, you know, the head of my wife, and like, you know, I've, I've got a, I'm a covering, like, i got to be strong. But how many know God gives grace to the humble? And I said, you know what, guys? This is all I said. I looked at my wife and kids. I said, I'm really going through it. Would you all pray for me? I've had a rough year. And I laid flat on my face, and one by one, my whole family prayed and prophesied over me. I'll never forget that moment. It was recorded. I have the audio file. Sometimes I listen to it. 
And then we, one by one, all prayed for one another, all the way down to the youngest, little Layla. Can you guys pray for me, she says. And lays face down, and as we put our hands on the small of her back, she begins to weep and crumble under the weight of God's love and presence. Sometimes your freedom and your healing doesn't come when you're trying to fight and strive in the secret place. It comes through a corporate encounter when you're surrounded by the family of God and God breaks in. And at the revelation of who God is, at the baptism of Jesus, remember, it was a revelation of Father, Son, and Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, Paul says, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit, Holy Spirit gifts. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord, Jesus the, the ministry gifts in Ephesians 4. And there are diversities of activities, but the same God who works all and in all. Romans 12, the gifts, the motivational gifts. You see, the moving of the Spirit, when the Spirit descended and then the voice came from heaven, there's something about how the Holy Spirit, when the Spirit of God, the manifest presence crashes in, we become family. Father just gathers us together. We become fitly framed together. And we're not just a dwelling place individually. We're a dwelling place of God corporately. Now, Paul goes on and he talks about the gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12. I'm going to read a couple of verses here. And he says, For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. In other words, all the people in the room, even though we're different people, we're, we're one person. We're Jesus. We're the body of Christ in the earth. Amen? Now, look what it says. Verse 13 of 1 Corinthians 12. For by one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body. The Holy Spirit baptized you into Christ. When we are baptized together in the manifest presence of God, the reality that we are one body manifests. Because we're walking through the sea together the cloud together. Paul even uses that language in 1 Corinthians 10. This is so profound. Look at this. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 2. All were baptized. He's talking about the old covenant type and shadow. All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Now you are baptized into Christ in the spirit and you're also baptized in water. It's very plain. But there is a corporate baptism. The people of God, how many know they went through the Red Sea and they all got delivered together? And so it is when the Lord encounters us in a way where we all experience his love and presence. And there's something about a body actually doing what it's created to do in the earth. The revelation, the authority, the mobilization where you and I, with the gifts that we carry and our call, our gifts, are, we come alive first within the body, and then we advance the kingdom outside. He's building his house, and he's advancing a kingdom. Come on, are you all with me? When we learn that there is a corporate encounter, God wants to encounter us together. The Father is like, I just want to crash in and smile over you all together where you're all just a mess and you're up here on the ground and the woman got to, listen, we have a really brilliant idea. Waterproof mascara out in the foyer. Come on, somebody. I remember at the Vegas church, we had altar ministry and there's this one sister where, you know, you know she, she like puts a little brow on there, like a little extra. Come on, somebody, right? And I'm, I'm laying hands on people, and I swear she went like this in position because she thought I was going to smear her brow. The same sister told us, you know what, I don't even wear mascara anymore because every time I come to church, I just cry it all off. And I'm like, how about waterproof mascara? We'll sell it in the foyer. And then Jesus turns over the tables, money changer. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> When we come in here together, though, and we all get wrecked by his love, every single one of us, even the ones who shut their heart off, it's the love of God just begins to, the oil of heaven just begins to break that yoke little by little. Even if it's a little uncomfortable for us. Why are they dancing up there? Because I've been set free. I can't help it. Why does Sarah cry like that and bow down before the Lord? Because she's encountered Jesus. 
And when we encounter him together, it's on. It's on, man. We're going to, the revelation of what we were declaring in worship and the scripture, Psalm 149, that my wife was reading. Talk about declaring victory and executing the victory that Jesus has won over this entire region. There has been strongholds. And the Lord just supernaturally said, no more. You know, when John G. Lake would go on a region, he saw all the principalities already bound. <laughs> he saw them bound. They're bound. We have the keys to the kingdom. It's time to bring heaven on earth. Because... We live under an open heaven. And when we encounter together, something powerful happens. Let me just close with a couple scriptures here. Acts chapter 2. Pentecost in the upper room. That was a corporate encounter. Let me just remind you what it says here. It says, when the day of, day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, say suddenly, suddenly. there came a sound from heaven. Wow, as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house and they were sitting. And there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire. And then one rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. It says they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. It was a corporate encounter. Let us believe God for upper room experiences that we would all get baptized afresh in the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul talks about, in Ephesians chapter 3, the mystery of the gospel kept secret now has been revealed that God wanted to include the whole world in his plan of salvation. And then he says that the church would make known the manifold wisdom of God to the rules and authorities in the heavenly realms. You know what the word manifold means? Many colored. How many know a rainbow comes when there's light and there's water? Imagine with me for a minute God crashing through with the light of his glory, opening the heavens. And the manifold wisdom of God, the many colored wisdom. How many know that the Bible says Jesus is the wisdom of God and the power of God? You know what the world needs right now? The wisdom of God, Jesus. You know what the world needs right now? The presence of God. You know what the church needs? Not a program, presence. We prioritize the presence. It's all about first encountering his presence together. Everything flows from that. And so right now we have some of the church trying to bring wisdom to fix things in the earth, but it's not heaven's wisdom. The wisdom that's from above, James 3.17, is first pure, peaceable, gentle, willing to yield Without hypocrisy, without, I'm chopping up the verse, but it's a really good verse. You should read it sometime. James 3.17, the wisdom from above. We need the wisdom from above. And so Paul says that the church would make known the manifold wisdom of God. Man, that is profound. Ephesians 5, I'm going to just close with this. This is so powerful. Verses 15 and 16. So be very careful how you live, not being like those with no understanding, but live honorably with true wisdom. See, there's a connection to the moving of the Spirit and wisdom, heaven's wisdom. We're living in evil times, Paul says. Take full advantage of every day as you spend your life for his purposes. Don't live foolishly, for then you will have discernment to fully understand God's will. Don't get drunk with wine, which is rebellion. Instead, be continually filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled continually with the Holy Spirit. Now, he's talking to the church, not just individuals. Hello? Church, encounter church, not just you individually. Let's encounter church, be filled continually with the Holy Spirit. Crash in, Lord. We want more corporate encounters. We want the presence of God to increase. It has been increasing. How many can testify that the last several months, the presence of God, just waving your hands in the air, like waving like you just don't care. How many know like that, that, that's our cry? We want more of that, God. More. Come in power. He says, be continually filled with the Spirit, and your hearts will overflow with a joyful song to the Lord. We just experienced that. Keeping spe- uh, keep speaking to each other with words of Scripture, singing the Psalms, 
We just read Psalm 149 with praises and spontaneous songs given by the Spirit. We just did that too. Always give thanks to Father God. This is powerful. For every person He brings into your life in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. So good. Would you pray with me? I'm going to let you go. I hope you all enjoyed this today. Let's believe God for corporate encounters. Can you say amen? I want to encounter the presence of the Lord. I don't want to just read about it. In His presence, hearts are mended. In His presence, bodies are healed. There is a move of God, and it's right happening right now and right here. It's now. And it's just going to increase. People are going to get saved, healed, delivered. People are going to be released in ministry. It's revival. It's what we were meant for. And this region's been crying out for it for a long time. And it's time. This is due season. It's time. It's time. I didn't move across the country not to see it. It's time. It's time. It's time. Right now. It's what we want, Lord. We live to meet with you together. Crash in. Would you begin to stir up an anticipation with our hearts? And I pray every person would encounter your presence. Lift your hands with me, would you? Even if you just lift them like this, like you're receiving. Learn to receive. Open your heart. And just gent- pray this with me. You ready? Pray, Holy Spirit, breathe on me. Let's pray that again. Whoa. <laughs> Some of y'all feel that? Say, Holy Spirit. Bless that little baby. (laughs) Sweet little baby. Breathe on every marriage and every family. I pray refreshing over every minister, every missionary, every five-fold ministry gift. I pray refreshing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful community. We believe you for the greater. We're going from faith to faith and from glory to glory. We pray these things in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Amen. Thank you.